Today I'm answering, are these lumps mammary cancer? Okay, so question number four is all about a couple of different lumps that are on a dog's belly that maybe look like, you know, mammary glands and where the mammary glands should be and they're wondering if these are mammary cancers. Now, um, you obviously can't see the picture, but regardless of any lump in any picture, it's impossible to know what any lump is from a picture alone. Um, you know, these ones, they don't look like typical mammary tumours, but they definitely potentially could be. You know, we rely when we're examining our pets on a lot of different things. So um, when it comes to masses, we rely on, on texture, on feel, on kind of palpating whether they're um, feeling, whether they're extending into adjacent tissues. But, you know, no matter how accurate your fingers are, no matter how sensitive your fingers are, we can't tell what a mass is just by feel and just by look. We might have a suspicious, a, sus a suspicion, sorry, a higher suspicion that it's more likely to be a certain lump, but we can never say with any degree of absolute certainty. Certainty. So really with any new lumps that develop, the best thing to do is, is firstly to get them checked out by your vet, and then depending on what they think, consider having something called a fine needle aspirate cytology carried out. So what this effectively is, is um, a needle, and this can be done conscious and unsedated animals, it's pain free and it's a great technique from that point of view. Um, it involves taking a little needle, um, kind of stabbing it into the lump and moving it around a little bit and then squirting the contents that is um, then within the needle out onto a slide and examining that under the microscope. Now, Unfortunately, that doesn't always give a, a complete diagnosis um, and you need to then move to a biopsy or an excision, so removing the lump and sending that off. But that's obviously more invasive. It in quite requires um, heavy sedation or anesthesia and surgery. Um, and so a fine needle aspirate in the majority of lumps is a great first step. Now, when it comes to mammary masses, though, unfortunately, an FNA or a fine needle aspirate is generally not really super useful because the mass population can be very mixed when it comes to mammary tumours uh, and it can be very hard to interpret with any degree of accuracy. So it might be that you get one type of cell um, on the FNA sample, but it may very well be because there's a mixed, um, mixed specimen, we're not getting uh, a representative sample. Now, if we're thinking about mammary tumours as again, then about 50% of those are malignant, meaning that they're nasty tumours, that they have the potential to spread to other parts of the body, and 50% are benign. You know, having said that, you know, we think of benign as something that we don't need to worry about. Well, benign mammary tumours definitely can cause problems. They might not spread to other parts of the body, but they can get really big, they can become ulcerated, they can be painful, and they can definitely um, be detrimental to a dog's quality of life and can ultimately be a reason for euthanasia if they've got to a stage that they're getting so big and ulcerated and causing so many problems. So really, removal in the early stages is the best option for a successful outcome when it comes to any type of mammary tumour. Now, it might be that these ones aren't mammary tumours, so we don't need to worry, but that's something to think about whenever you feel any masses, but any masses, especially kind of along the, the ventrum, so the bottom, the belly of your dog.